Uh, yeah, we're no hiccups. No way. They can hear me? <laughs> oh! How's everybody doing? Oh, what did he say? I hope this won't be too abrasive. Oh, man, man, oh, man. Hey, ready? We're, today we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. Hey! hey! What? <laughs> okay. Number 85. Oh, wait, hang on. Welcome, everybody. This is Festool Live. It's 12 noon. It's Festool Friday. And we are so stoked today because this is episode 85. Hey, Minnie, what's it on? Hand sanding basics? Hey! Hey, man, come on, man. Okay, so that's what I always say, or I did say, <clears throat> when I heard we were going to be carrying hand sanding abrasives. I went, okay. But then I saw it was made out of granite. I'm just going to allude a little to you because I'm going to show you all kinds of killer applications. All right. I almost forgot. We're going to do this in reverse. Okay? So let's introduce the room because everybody here is a part of the team. Over here is Spocky. Yep. He's been well trained today. Over here is Min Min. <laughs> okay. We don't want to replay a last week, Spocky. Online, we have Brent Shively uh, from the Build with Brent series, and that's on YouTube. Don't forget to check all of that out. It's fantastic. He's going to answer all your questions online and crack all kinds of great dad jokes. Um, also, we have Chris the Unit Seibert right here on the camera. He's already starting to shake. Okay, and right over here, we have Big D Clements, and he's on the board, and he's making sure... Hey. Hey, hi, Craig and Tyler. From Where are you guys from? Rocky Mount, Virginia. Virginia. We met you at Hotville. Okay. I want to call out another integral part of our team. I've called them out a couple times last year. I'm going to call them out this year. From our chief sales officer all the way to every single RSM, all the directors, all our RSMs. Our RSMs are regional sales managers. From the bottom of our hearts here at Festool, USA and Canada, we want to thank you for all your hard work. You're out there on the front lines for us, showing people how the tools work and teaching our dealers how the tools work. We really thank you. So just a, a heads up, you're appreciated. <laughs> okay. Huh. And let's see. What else I got to say? Okay. No, oh, no. Hey, hey, come on, man. I got a lot of cool stuff to talk about today. All right. <clears throat> I also want to talk about, I mentioned YouTube. We got tons of great stuff. There's a killer video out there right now. It's called Inside Fest Tool. People always want to know what's so special about your drills. Go watch Chris Devlin and Rick Bush talk about all the ins and outs and why you should own a Fest Tool drill. No, it's, it's also how revolutionary uh, we've been over the years. We were the first to market with what? A brushless motor. Everybody laughed at us, but everybody's got one now. I just want to call those two guys out because they're an integral part of our team here in product management. How did that sound, Minnie? Pretty good? Wait. Not bad, huh? Yeah, Boy, do I know how to schmooze. Okay. <laughs> Sparky, how you doing? You doing good? Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, so I want to point this out. Hopefully, you all know this. This is Granat Sandpaper. Okay, this is the six inch 150 millimeter. Okay, this is the most amazing sandpaper. Before I came to work for Festool, while working for Festool, this abrasive is fantastic. It cuts like wildfire. We have it in 40 grit all the way to 1500 grit. Uh, I think I've talked about it before, but I can't gush enough about this because it lasts. And abrades so well, but it lasts a long time. Doesn't load as much. So about, jeez, four, five, six years ago, um, I was in a training, and I was told we're going to bring hand sanding braces to America. So I'm thinking, okay, okay, okay. And then they announced it was going to be granite. And I went, whoo, thank God, because this abrasive is phenomenal. So when I talk about abrasives today or hand sanding basics, it'll all be based around granite sandpaper. And you know this uh, is all aluminum oxide, okay, in 
f- anywhere between 120 all the way down to 40. It's still aluminum oxide, but we also embed in there ceramic grit. So this stuff cuts like wildfire. This is an amazing paper. And if you're not using granite, you should be. So that was a message brought to you by Granite Sandpaper. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have it for every style of paper, whether DTS, ITS, uh, 150, 125, RO90. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece over here. <clears throat> and so the reason I wanted to do this is someone said, you have, and this was the question, why do you have two full or three full pages devoted to hand sanding abrasives in your catalog, but there's six pages here in North America on our website of hand sanding abrasives. So oh, it, in a phone call, that's really difficult to tell somebody that you need hand sanding abrasives because you all have it, whether it's a shop roll or sheet paper or uh, sanding sponges. But I want to go through some of the offerings that we have and as I bet you there's going to see I bet you there's going to be some things that you never knew about, okay? You might want to explore some of these. I'm also going to eliminate the confusion. <laughs> Hopefully. So let's get started. Okay. So the way I wanted to get started is Chris, I'm going to have you Big D, do you have this over here and you'll be right here over my shoulder. I have this all laid out. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to start with hand sanding blocks. <laughs> um, you can buy it in a set right here. Okay, you can buy it individually. Okay, this is the hard one. There's a medium one. There's a square one. It works with the 80 by 133 paper. Hey, this is the same paper that works with the what? The LS130 and the RTS and RTSC 400. So you can buy this individually, but what's nice is, and if you're like me, I'm pretty frugal about stuff. Sometimes I'm, I'm going like this. I'm going, you know, that's 120 grit, but now it's probably 150. There's still some good, some good what? Abrasion left in this. So get a hand sanding block and look, you just put it on here and now you can sand. So where do you use, oh, wait a minute. Why do you hand sand? Okay, there's all kinds of profiles you have to hand sand. You can get a lot of profiles with the LS130, but on a spindle, like right here, you gotta you gotta find the right hand sanding abrasive to get in there. And this right here on this flat spot, well, let's go over here to a larger version. I could take this look and I can get right up in here like this and sand, okay? Right up against there, and it's really nice. Okay, so there you go. I mean, of course, I'm going to use my Rotex to sand this or my ETS-150. But boy, you're always going to have those times. Almost every build you do, you have to hand sand something. So that's why we want to offer granite abrasive in the different um, uh, hand sanding formats. Now, here's a little tip for you. You know, and I've showed you this in other videos... You can use interface pads. Okay, so say I got to sand something that has a slight contour with it. You could take this and give it a little what? A little sponge to it so I can get in those profiles. Okay, and you'll see, look, see the give it gets? So if I'm sanding something like this and I don't want to create a flat spot, I can get right in there and knock it out. Okay, so that gives you a little play in there. And <clears throat> right here... You get, this comes in a two pack, so it's awesome. You can actually build two of them up to get into different or heavier profiles. I've done this in the past. I've taken this and to get into that OG area right here, because think about it, everybody. You, you hang, if you hang crown for a living, this never comes to get, well, I shouldn't say, if you have a slide compound miter saw other than a capex, sometimes you'll get offsets right here, okay? So that'll get in there, and you've got to fair this out. And you're all probably nodding at home going, oh, yeah, I do hand sand in that application. So this gives you a little extra there. Now, you got an RO150. You got an ETS150, right? Whatever, slash five, slash three, brushed or brushless. You got six-inch paper, right? And you're thinking, man, that was 80 grit. By the time I changed it, it was 220. Well, you might need 220 grit. So there's two versions of the six-inch pad. 
And this goes missing sometimes. I think these are awesome. Okay. When I line this up, one's hard and one's medium. Okay. I'm going to take this and Chris, get in here. See how I, I put the radius right there and I come back here and I put the radius here. But I want you to see this taper here. It's beveled back, right? So if I take that, I can stand up against an adjacent, I'll do it right here, an adjacent edge and I'm not going to braid that edge. Okay. Or try not to. <laughs> okay. So that is something a lot of people don't know. This is tapered back, and you've got two different uh, hardnesses of this. This comes in kit. I'll say it again. Okay. Oh, duh. And yes, you have interface pads for this. This is the one I always talk about. It's a two pack. So let me see if I can get this to work right. Okay. You can get two, which adds up to basically almost one. So what's nice about this is I can take this, put it on here like this, okay, like this, and then put a piece of paper on there to give it that little extra give, and I'm ready to go. So you see how that gives you, and you can sand into contours. All right? Cool. Now, <clears throat> that's one way of doing it. Okay, let me see if I got this. All right. It's funny because on our website and in our catalog, they go, do you, uh, I don't know if they're in the 2021 catalog uh, or the blocks are in the 2022, but we have these with dust extraction and it works with the same paper, 80 by 133. <clears throat> and I want to show you this piece. It used to come, I'm going to take it off. Hopefully it doesn't break on me, but it used to come just like the, oh, duh, you could take that off. Okay, and you can use one or two hoses. This is the adapter for your 27 millimeter. Okay, and I want to show you this. Or you can get this super thinner hose. I think it's 21.5, and it goes on here just like this. Okay, it just it's a snug fit. In fact, I think I'm going to use this one today, Chris. This adapter here that comes with the dust-free hand sanding. That goes into your 20, oh, the other way, into your 27 millimeter. Okay? Snug fit, but it works. But I want to show you this because I think this part, this green part, is really slick. Okay? You see how I turn that and it opens up? Now, I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on my dust extraction. And what I did is I turned the suction all the way down. Okay? I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to tell you, the suction is fantastic on that, okay? When I put this up against there, it basically wants to hold there. And I'm going to turn the suction all the way up. You see that? This is very flexible, so there's not a lot of tugging on your hand. Uh, this morning, I was using it with the 27. It was fine. And I could do the exact same thing. But this is, a lot, this is very flexible. Okay, so I want you to see this. I'm going to open... If I left this like this, it started sanding. It kind of pulls too much in and tugs. But if I take it now and I open it up, you're going to see it break away. So that doesn't pull into the material. Okay. It gets the lion's share of the dust. So you can sand dust free. Okay. And the surface tension is fine on it. So that's what that is. If the... If the variable suction on the CT dust extractor turned all the way down is still too much, that is a little breakaway to get a little more airflow in there to make it flow. And that comes with this hand sanding block. Cool. Cool. In fact, I always have one close at hand right here. There's a little storage unit for it right here on your, on your uh, CT, uh, uh, your... Work center, your mobile work center. Woo! Okay, I'm just going to cover it before I move. Oh, here we go. Now, there's another type of block out there that we have in a catalog. They just break it up like this, okay? And it comes in a six-pack, right? Okay, but it's a, it's a square. So a lot of people who use this are who? Drywall guys, okay? And they're getting into what? Corners. Right? So you could take this. Right. <coughs> and this works fantastic. I know guys finishing drywall with this. They don't have a Planex, but they have hundreds of these. 
Okay, now they should invest in what? A Planex. And this is available in 30, the square one, just the square one. And here's where a little confusion lies. Is available in 36, 60, 120, and 220. Now, this is the one I think is the winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. You see how it's got a point right here? And you see how there's a slight radius right here. Okay. When I say I use this a lot, I use this a lot. And where do I use it? A lot of the times I'm right in here on, you see how that field is a little high? I'll get in there and see how that point gets right in there. And I can see on that right out, just like this. See this radius? Where would I use that? Come on, everybody, you know, look. You see how that's a little offset right there? You all do this. You just, you take a piece of sandpaper, but what if it's what? What if it's got a nice, perfect radius? So that's great for cove and... That that beveled edge, that point fits right into that corner on that drywall to do a quick finish up. It's wonderful. If you don't have a DTS 400 for that, this does a quick job of it for everybody who's got a plane X and needs to get that final corner in there. So those are, and I think we label them under sanding sponges, but this is the uh, different um, contours of the sponge. This is only available in 120 grit, the radius and the bevel. I just wanted to point that out. That's where some confusion has been in the past. <clears throat> okay. Sanding sponges. Okay. It's a sponge. Look at, look, uh, where does that get? That gets in where? Look, right here. You can get that just like this. Okay. And you're not going to what? Hit the flats. You know you all... I mean, you can actually get the top with this, too, if you want, right? And it forms to the contour. What if you need to get into this OG pattern on this end grain? You can nail that. And I know some people who sand that end grain to about 220. And yes, the sanding sponges, you can get them all the way up, okay? I just happen to have 220 here and 120. So there's your sanding sponges, okay? Cool. I'm sure people are asking grit ranges. I've tried to label most of the grit ranges in here. You can always go to the catalog or the website to see what's available. You know how I know that? I did. <laughs> so sanding this profile after you've routed it can be problematic. I'm always going to hand sanding. And one of the quickest things I used to say is somebody says, why do you have all these hand sand sanding braces? I go, sanding contours. And I always used to go raised panel. Now, let's eliminate some more confusion. <clears throat> this is 9 by 11 sheets. Metric, it's 230 by 280. Okay, but we all know this is 9 by 11 sheets. Um, you probably at home have a quarter sheet sander or half sheet sander. Those are based off a of 9 by 11. Okay, so um, you take a sheet like this, okay, you all use this, you cut it up, you, you have tons of these papers in or around your shop, we have it in the Granada Abrasive, which is awesome, and right here is the confusion. Someone says, my God, you have so many grits. Not really, we have 40 to 400, but there's two layers of that list. The first 40 to 400 is 10 packs, and the other ones are, I believe, 50 packs, right? Yep. You know how I know it? It says it right there. <laughs> okay. So there you go. Go look at your quantities, and that's why it's a long list in the catalog. But I want to show you something, uh, a quick tip. If you look right here, I have this wonderful cutting jig. I think I've, sh I think I've shown this before. Okay. I've always made this. I took an old hacksaw blade. And I'll take this like this, and look, I have it labeled here. So if you want to rip these down, see this? And this will be a little bit longer. You got two pieces for what? Your half sheet sander. If I want to rip this, look, I'll take it again like this. And there's my, that's into quarters, but if I want it for my quarter sheet sander, I'll just take it like this. And if I would have done it twice, that's enough to get it in those clips that you have, okay? So this is a wonderful uh, paper, but w I mention this all the time. We all use this paper. You probably inherited some from your, your grandfather and your father, right? Um, I was taught this my first week 
from my mentor. I used to just take this, fold it up, and he said, no, 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 you do it like this. You take it, and it's a three-way like this. You take it like this. Okay, that way there you can use the whole abrasive. And when you fold it up or you try fold it like this, this never comes in contact with the other one. And you just go and you rotate it like this so you have a nice abrasive at all times. And you can use the whole piece of paper. So there's a quick tip for you. Okay, I've covered the sanding sponges. This is the 60 grit. Move that over there. What's next, Chris? Rolls of paper? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> in the catalog, we have shop rolls of paper. <laughs> and it's, oh, let's break this out. It is 115 by 25 millimeter. 115 is four and a half inches. So you could take this right to a ripping jig, have this on the wall for your quarter inch sanders. But everybody has shop rolls. And yes, we wanted to make sure the shop rolls were available in granite and just normal paper. And it's a paperback paper. Okay, in Lost in the Catalog, <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking at the clock. <laughs> hey, by the way, this isn't Lost in the Catalog, Episode 4. That's coming up. But sometimes I think hand sanding abrasives are Lost in the Catalog, but there's so much to them. It's all application-based. Um, okay, I mentioned in Lost in the Catalog, I think, two or three, that we um, have granite soft roll. Okay, and yes, I use this as well a lot, okay? Uh, I can't work without this. It's wonderful. When I rip a sheet off, it's pre-perforated. So when I rip a sheet off, there's no f abrasive there. So I can sand up against an adjacent surface. <clears throat> I've always gotten wows with this when I've shown people, but I can take this, get right in there as well. It all depends on what weapon you want to choose. I can sand that out. But a lot of people don't know, what do you got to do? You got to blow that off or vacuum it off? The back of this sponge actually is your initial tack cloth. Look at that. It gets the lion's share of that. So works fantastic. That's granite soft. That's available. And I don't want to go on and on about it, but that this is a wonderful abrasive. And that is available. Check this out. In 120 all the way to 800. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you're a turner, this is awesome because on your lathe, you can get right into those profiles I do at home on my lathe when I turn, and I can get right in there all the way, and I usually go to 400 when I'm finishing, and Granite Soft is probably the best lathe paper I've ever used. Boy, <laughs> it lasts a super long time. And of course, stuff like this and spindles, you know, um, I, yeah, I could make, and see how this got a taper to it? In an earlier episodes, I did LS-130, but guess what? This is a taper, so you're always going to have to sand something like this. And sometimes it's just to knock down the grain, okay? This is the new spindle, but that just gets it like that, and Granat Soft is fantastic. This is, I believe, red oak, and I can just tack it off like that and shoot it. Works great. Profiles, profiles, profiles. Hand sanding, hand sanding, hand sanding. Holy moly, Minnie. Hey, is that Willie up there, Spock Trishan? That is Willie. Willie, my main man. I haven't seen you in like 10 years. How are you, Willie? Okay. <clears throat> One of the papers, yes, we have this, okay, for our sanders, okay? And I, want, I hope you know this. Yeah, it looks like a scotch spray pad, right? <laughs> okay. It's called fleece, V-L-I-E-S, and we have it in different grits. And somebody will say, what do you mean different grits? If I had a, a, an, under a microscope, it's a bunch of woven threads, okay? But on those threads are little granite abrasive, okay? So there are so many applications for these pads, fleece pads. We have them in bulk roll. <laughs> All right, and you can look at the different, the different um, grits on the fleece box that's pre-perforated. This is what I have at home. It's 100, 320, and 800. And there's sometimes when I have this, look, look, this is super smooth. It's laid down really nice. I don't want to hit it with granite like 1500. 
I I just want to put a my last top coat on there. I might hit this just to give it some claw. I want to scratch it a little so my top coat of lacquer on there at least adheres to it. So I'll take it like this. You probably can't even see this, but that just gives it a it dulls it a little, I should say, but gives it a little bite for that uh, top coat to adhere to. That's one of the things I use fleece for. I use it to take down cast iron in my shop. If I uh, have some rust, uh, I'll take it down with fleece and some mineral spirits. You know what you use this for. A lot of people use it cleaning up stuff in the shop. So that's fleece. I know there are certain levels of patinas that people will use fleece on different solid surface levels and lusters. We have all of that, and the fleece is available in almost all our sanders. Uh, but a lot of people just use the 6-inch on the Rotex for uh, solid surface. <clears throat> I'm looking around the room. Minnie, yes. do you have anything to add? Minnie, was that somewhat exciting? Yeah. Woo! Hand sanding. <laughs> we covered it. I got through it. I'm happy because I do really think uh, it, it just eliminates a lot of confusion out of the catalog, I think, for everybody. And uh, I'm going to tell you what. We got so much planned for a match. It's ridiculous. There's a lot of brand new tools, new products coming out here in North America. And I'm going to cover every daggone one. I'm even going to cover one. Cross your fingers. We got the right internet live in Rhode Island at JLC. So I'm going to cover a brand new release there uh, right at JLC. So lots coming out. Looking forward. Hey, if everybody's going uh, Journal of Light Construction, that's in Providence, Rhode Island. Go. It's one of the best shows in America. We'll see you there. The whole live crew is going to be there. And you're going to meet, except for many. And you're going to meet a lot of cool people, except for many. Okay. I am, oh my God, many. Okay, so I always, I'm always checking time, right, these days, because I want to see how much time I actually spend on calling everybody out, because this is really, really cool. And, and hopefully I've taken a, today, uh, a, a kind of a mundane um, topic, thank you, Minnie, and made it a little bit interesting and maybe clarified some things for you. Okay. Oh, Chris is nodding. Chris liked it, Minnie. <laughs> All right, Big D, did you get any tips? Okay, good. Hopefully you did too. Okay, here we go. I have Lawrence from Dublin, Ireland. Awesome. I'm on my way. It looks like I'm going to Ireland this year. Dale from Swadalinco. Mike M from Anfella. Mike M and fella from Austin, Texas. I'll be down there in April. Mayo from Ireland. Woo! Mayo, we're going to have a good time in Ireland. Boise, Idaho. Joe from Wasika. You're back. Larry from Sun City, West Arizona. He's always there. Yolarvi, Finland. You're always there. Des from Harrogate, England. Caldwell, Idaho. Paramimbo. Suriname. I'll get it right one of these days. Hopefully I am. Jason from Fenton, Michigan. Tom and Kelly, where you been? Oh, you're here every week. From Eat. Edmonton, Georgia, East Yorkshire, Ian, you haven't missed one, and we all love you, Ian, say hi to Julie, okay, the Netherlands, Lausanne, Switzerland, you're always there, Ross, Hawaii, from Chichester, England, Mark S. from Woodcraft Springfield, Virginia, Joe from Bellevue, North Carolina, Bozeman, Montana, Anastasios, from Athens, Greece. Has we had Greece before? Yeah. Not often. Okay. Ed from Douglasville, Georgia. Yanina? No, that's not Yanina. That's Yana. V oh, that's Vienna, Austria. I thought it was Yanina. Man, she's watching. West Fairley, Vermont. Rich from Lufkin, Texas. Serene, Michigan. <laughs> Michigan. Serene, Wisconsin. Wow. Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. Warsaw, Poland. Chris, you're always there from Malta. Kurt from Rochester, Michigan. Dan from Whitestone, New York. Be careful, Chris. You're going to step on my main man, Sparky. Garen from Kyalami, South Africa. George from Naples, Florida. How you doing, George? Tom from Zanesville, Ohio. Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
Chanio from Atco, New Jersey. Michael from Queen Creek, Arizona. Eden, New York. Adam from St. Louis. Frank from Downers Grove, Southern California. Sagamore Hills, Ohio. Blake from Novato, California. I'll get you that pot number, Blake. I promise. Just had a real busy day and la- busy last night. Dana from Yakult, Washington. Paul from Reading, Berkshire, UK. Worcester, Mass. Oh, everybody else says Worcester, but it's Worcester. Newark, Ohio. Mechanicsville, Virginia. Stefan from Las Vegas. Innisfil, Canada. That's new. Innisfil, Canada. Jeff O. from Clarksburg, Maryland. Roscoe, Illinois. Wolvega, the Netherlands. How you doing, Roll? Uh, let's see. Ted from Pine Hoist. Greeley, Colorado. Tynesboro, Mass. Claire, how are you doing from Belgium? Greg from KC. Is that Greg from KC and the Sunshine Band? Or Greg from KC? Okay, never mind. Kansas City. Okay, Oliver from Marin, French Alps. Bellevue, Ontario. Greg from Cape Cod, Buzzards Bay. Rob, Paris, Tennessee. Soren, Denmark. Alton, New Alton from Hampshire, UK. Portland, Oregon. Many, we got more. I'm going to turn around and you can keep writing. Because yeah. I got to read them this way, Minnie. Yeah. And I don't want to hit Sparky. Oh, my God. Akron, Ohio. Rick from Blackpool, UK. Warped Woodsman. That's so cool. From Portland, Oregon. Warped Woodsman, man. I'm just warped. Romford, England. Doug from Zionsville. Woo, I know where that. He's got a access. Okay. <laughs> Floyd's Knobs. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Is that a name of a town, Floyd's Knobs? Right there. Look. Yeah, that's Jordan in the warehouse. That's my buddy, man. American vet. Steve from Horton, Devon, UK. The Hague, Netherlands. That was cool because we watched uh, uh, something last night on the television. Marianne and I. She goes, what's the Hague? And I told her, I've been there. They, and I go, That's the, that was so much fun. That, they have the killer beach. Warren from Batavia, Ohio. Monterey, California. Bel Air, Maryland. Fort Collins, Colorado. Dawn. You're always there from Albuquerque. Houston, Texas. Bruges, Gem, uh, Belgium. Terry from Salt Lake City, Utah. Richard from Washington. Leo from Holland. Card Gotland. Gotland. What the heck is that? Gotland. Ricard Gotland. Well, welcome. You're from Gotland. Rochester, New York. Lou from the Netherlands. Tikfa, Louisiana. Minnie loves that. Minnie loves Tikfa. Dan from Kingman, Arizona. Plain, Plano, Texas. Ottawa, Canada. Just Canada. Boucherville, Quebec. Uh, let's see. Prattville, Alabama. Michael T- L. Terry. Richard from Washington. Jones, Iowa. Adam from Union, Maine. Uh, Vancouver, Washington. Rio Rancho, Toledo, Ohio. Pinna from London, England. Nicholas from Belgium. Oh my God, really? Yeah. David Pugh, you are watching Festool Live. My main man, I can't, we had such a great training class, you and I, out in Las Vegas. You are, oh my God, David, is So you, he reached out to me the other day on, uh, on YouTube. What a great guy. David, I hope you and your family are doing well. I, if I remember right, you are out in Salt Lake City area or somewhere in Utah. Great to hear from you. You're awesome. Okay. Another Vancouver, Washington. Another Vancouver, Washington. So, so you know what that means, Minnie? That's a two-pack. All right, good. <laughs> okay, everybody. Wow, I'm going on vacation, aren't I? You are. Wow, I'm going to go home and paint my house next week. Okay, uh, inside, not outside. It's a little cold. So, everybody, I want to thank you for joining us. What do I always say, Minnie? We love you. Yes. Okay, thank you for being here with us. Uh, I can't believe it's, it, it is 2022, right? Wow, I can't believe we've been doing this almost two years. So this was episode 85, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can see this on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Tune in, please. You have a great reference for all your hand-sanding abrasives. 
Okay, have a great weekend. We love you.